Okay, so we've just finished by looking at that process of going from a quote to a sales order and I mentioned at the end of the last session that we would be taking a look at the delivery process but I just went back and reviewed what we'd already covered and I thought it might be a good idea just to come back in and take a look at the sales order as a standalone uh, exercise so because not everybody is going to go from a sales quotation to a sales order so let's just quickly go and dive in and take a look at the sales order because there's a couple of extra things in the sales order functionality that I wanted to make sure you are aware of so again I'm going to use my common functions widget here in my dashboard and remember we're using version 9.3 here in uh, in the system so when I go in and I select my sales order uh, it's going to pop open that sales order screen. Now, again, remember, this is a transaction screen. When transaction screens like the sales order screen open up, they open up in add mode. So it assumes that you're going to add a new record. And that's why down the bottom here it says add. But remember, when you open up a master file information like business partners and so on, they open up in find mode. So they assume that you're gonna go looking for some information. All right, so here's our sales order screen. And again, I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but the beauty of these screens is that they all are very, very similar in layout and very, very similar in structure. Couple of things that you wanna be aware of in this screen and in the sales order process generally. Remember, we talked in the last sessions about the difference between an item and a service order. So remember to change between those, you just come in here and you choose item and service. Now, of course, what's the big difference between an item and a service order? Well, in the service order, you are basically typing a description of the service that was provided. You're putting in a GL account for the, um, for the sales revenue. Where is that going to go? Uh, and so on and so forth. So it's really not tied at all to inventory. Now, if you're in a scenario where you say, well, that doesn't quite cover what we do because we have code set up for all of our, all of our service items, but we just don't keep stock. Well, again, that's where a non-stock item in SAP Business One can help you. And we'll talk about that when we get into the inventory area, but you can create what's called a non-stock item where you know, you give it a code, you give it a description, uh, but it just never tracks the inventory values because you, in theory, have an unlimited number of those. But there are some things that you can do around that to help you in other areas of like tracking the available uh, resources that you have. For example, you might only have a fixed number of available hours every month. You might want to get some utilization information. So you could set up those available hours as stock items, receipt in the available hours, um, for the, the staff that you have uh, and then um, decrement those as you're invoicing them out. But anyway, we'll talk more about that um, when we get into some other areas. But, but I think that's really indicative of how much capability and flexibility there is in SAP Business One. And that's why I would encourage you, um, if you've ever got questions about how you can solve a particular challenge, obviously a partner is your first port of call, but don't forget to get onto the Q&A forums on, on asug.com because there's lots of experts out there uh, who are willing and able to help you answer some of those questions. But anyway, when you're looking at your, your sales order, a uh, couple of things to be aware of is that you have um, these additional tabs available for you up the top. So remember we talked about the primary grid here, which has got your main contents, and you have the capability to be able to edit the columns that appear in here. And remember there were also additional features that were uh, uh, accessible by using the right click function when you're on a product line. But let's talk about some of these others. Let's go in and we'll actually create uh, a sales order because it always makes it a little bit easier um, when you get started. So I'm gonna create a sales order for Earthshaker. And again, there's our little reminder that they've exceeded their credit limit. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna put in uh, the delivery date. And so I'm gonna make that, uh, schedule it for delivery on today's date. Um, so now that I've done that, you can see that um, when we come in here, we have these additional tabs. We've got our logistics tab. So this is where you're able to go in and specify, do I want this to go to a different delivery address? 
Okay, do I want it uh, to go to a different billing address? Because remember, with SAP Business One uh, against the business partner record, you could have multiple delivery and multiple shipping addresses kept on file. You also have some additional components here that tie back to the logistics process. Do you want to print a picking slip for this particular order? Do you want to process the document for non-drop ship warehouse lines and so on? Now, a lot of these things you might look at and you go, well, what exactly does that mean? beyond the scope of what we're do doing in these basic sessions. Uh, but again, we can, we can talk about those in some more detailed sessions later. You've then also got things like your pick and pack remarks when you are uh, gonna push this through to the pick and pack process. And then also, if you are in a situation where you sell your products um, and you may have channel partners or distributors involved and you need to record who is the distributor or the channel partner that's associated with this sales order. That's what this BP channel name and BP channel contact is there for. All right, so it's going to try and pick that up for you automatically off the customer record, but you can go in and you can put that information in there. Then when you look at your accounting information, now this is where things can start to get a little bit complex because you're looking at the different ways that you've set up your accounting structure inside the organization. But the fundamentals are, this is what's controlling things like um, what are the remarks that go against the journal. Then things like what are the payment terms that are being selected for this particular transaction? And then what is the payment method that you expect? You can also go and do things like manually recalculating the due dates uh, and so on and so forth. And you can also change to use the shipped goods account in the GL. You've got the ability here to specify what is the project code that this is this sales transaction relates to. So as soon as you click in there, of course, and then you get your lookup, and then you can see here are my list of projects that are sitting in the system. So I can now code this transaction against a project. That helps me get that quick view of a profit and loss against a project. What's the cancellation date for the order, the required date for the order? And all these things are fairly straightforward. And then, of course, what is the, the customer's order number that they're referencing? Now, you've also got this function here called reference document. All right. And so what you've got the ability to do here is link this transaction back to other transactions. All right, so you can really start to build quite a, um, a, a good picture of how all these documents and all these transactions that exist inside your business are all linked together. And you can see all the different transactions that you can link them to. So these don't necessarily have to be accounting um, related links. So it's, you know, you might say, well, why would I want to link a landed cost document to a sales order? Well, this is, um, this is to give you that flexibility so you can tie these things back together. So if you're ever trying to audit or do something like that, you've got that capability. Okay, so that's kind of nice functionality there. Uh, and that's the great thing. You always need to keep an eye on Business One um, and keep an eye on those new releases as they come out because lots of these things just, um, you know, quietly make their way into the product. So it's always a good idea if you have a champion user inside the organization, somebody whose job it is to, you know, really keep an eye on this. Make sure you have the opportunity to let everybody know what's happening. But of course, you can see um, us at ASUG as your champion user in some respects. And then of course, you've got your attachments. And this is where you can attach all the different documents. Let's say, for example, this was a sales order um, and you had to custom make some parts and the customer had sent you, you know, a specification or um, they'd sent you some special instructions or whatever, any kinds of files you can go in and you can attach them into your SAP Business One sales order. So that's always kind of nice that you've got that capability there. Now, a couple of other things that you need to be aware of when you're in your sales order, remember that each of the transactions, um, whether it's sales orders actually or any other transaction, it's going to enable different functions up here in your toolbar. So right now you'll see, because I'm in a sales order, I've got a gross profit calculator that's available to me. I'm able to specify what is the payment details. Am I taking payment at the same time as the sales order? And then was that payment split up across credit cards and cash and, and, and checks and bank deposits and so on and so forth? Volume and weight calculations, you've got those capabilities in there as well. So remember to keep an eye on what's happening up here 
in the toolbar. But again, of course, remember, you've got that right click functionality and you'll see there's a correlation between these, these icons here that appear and the icons that are available to you up here. All right, so it's just a matter of what works um, most effectively for you. All right, a couple of other things when you're on that right click, you see you've got the ability to create a new activity. So for example, you could be putting in a sales order and then you might want to create a new activity to follow up on the sales order, check if the customer is happy, or maybe you need to check something in the warehouse or whatever the case may be. So all of those things are very, very helpful for you as you're working your way through the process. But of course, you don't have to use any of that. You can just keep it really, really simple and really straightforward. So it's up to you how you want it to work. Okay, so just remember that those capabilities are there. Uh, another really nice one is this ability to, to save a document, save a sales order as a draft. So you can save it as a draft, maybe you're not quite finished with it, and then you can come back in uh, and keep working with that transaction. But when I'm in here and I'm putting in my lines, We'll go ahead and we'll do our look up and we'll grab a line. We'll pick our JB Office Print 1420. Again, don't forget that you have sitting behind a bunch of these, these fields, you have the capability to come in here and you can right click and you can see all these additional capabilities that you have, the ability to specify your batch and serial numbers, the ability to calculate the gross profit, for example, the ability to do an item availability check, uh, to do an available to promise calculation and so on. So for example, if I'm looking at this particular product, I want to look at my gross profit, I can simply select the gross profit calculation there. And then it brings up line by line and shows me my gross profit. Now the gross profit calculation is preset in the settings like what um, what cost or what price does it use for calculating the gross profit. But what you can do is you can do an ad hoc calculation here. So you can say, okay, well, let's see what um, what's my profit based on the last purchase price. So you'll see the last purchase price was $400. So that gives you a different um, GP percentage and a different GP amount than what it was when you were using the base price. Okay, so again, those capabilities are there for you to be able to do those calculations and say, okay, well, what would be my GP um, compared to my production standard cost? Now, in this particular instance, uh, I don't have a production standard cost, so that's why it's asking me to go in and type this information. Now, you can go in and you can hit the update button. All right, and that will pick up those new costs and put them against the transaction. So you wanna be careful with that, okay? So, because um, if you do that, that is going to potentially impact on those calculations. But if you're paying um, salespeople on the basis of GP earned or, or things like that, there's a lot of flexibility there. So I'm just gonna hit on the uh, OK button there, and we're fine with that. So that's our gross profit calculation. Now, same scenario here. Um, you'll see against a lot of these different lines, when you right click, um, it shows you very specific information. But if I go here, for example, at the unit price, and I right click on here, what you can do is you can go in and you can see that the last prices option is available. So when I choose last prices, it now gives me the ability to see all the different times that this customer has purchased this item. Now you can limit it down and say, I just wanna see the last 10 times they bought the product. Um, or you can limit it down and say, look, I'm only interested in seeing um, the sales orders, the last 10 times they ordered the product, or maybe the last 10 times that the product order actually went all the way through to an invoice and how much did they pay. Right, so that makes things nice and simple for you uh, and, and gives you the ability then if you want to, you can then drill down on one of those invoices. You can say, okay, well they bought 19 at this particular point in time. I wonder what else they bought at the same time. So one click will drill you down and you can see the other items that they bought at the same time. See if there's some cross sell and upsell opportunities there for you. All right, so the key to this of course is getting access to the information you need when you need it so that you can answer questions uh, and do your job more effectively. So that's kind of everything that I wanted to show you there in the sales order entry screen. So now we've done that, 
Let's kick in and let's now start looking at the delivery process as promised.